Hello Team YJ, I'm Walt, and in this video I'm going to go over how to replace the electrolytic capacitors in your fuel-injected YJ's computer. My two rigs are running 88 with the drivetrain from a 1994 4-liter, and my parts rig, which is a 1993 4-liter. The engine's been pulled out of the parts rig, but I've got both computers and have one done already. It's back in my runner and working fine. First off, why do we replace the capacitors? Electrolytic caps are one of the least durable components on any circuit board. Heat and age get to them quicker, and so they tend to fail first. When they fail, several things can reportedly happen, including low voltage to the fuel pump and a no-start, no-check engine light issue. Before you get started, here's what you'll need. A wrench to disconnect the battery on your Jeep, a quarter inch drive ratchet with 5 16 inch and 3 8 inch sockets and a short extension. A number 2 Phillips head screwdriver. Wire cutters. A soldering station with rosin coarse solder. A solder wick and or a solder sucker will be very helpful. Three 220 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitors. Here are the caps I bought. They're a good name brand cap and come in a pack of five, so I have a couple spares in case the soldering operation goes wrong. Do not cheap out on these. You want them to perform well and last a long time. The replacements were a little smaller physically than the ones on the board. That's probably because capacitor technology has advanced a bit in the last 30 years. As long as they're the right spec, they'll work. I did two computers, so I ordered two packs of five. You'll also need silicone sealer to reseal the circuit board. This is important. You want to get the right stuff. Common Parts Store RTV is not rated for circuit boards. It can retain moisture and cause corrosion and short circuit issues. Here's the sealer I bought. In chasing down the spec, I found this description. This stuff is high temp and rated for food service, but the important part for us is these two lines. It's appropriate for circuit boards and it's dielectric, meaning it won't conduct electricity and short out your circuit. I also got some dielectric grease to protect the connector when I put everything back together. Okay, let's get started. Here's the ECM in its stock position in my 93 parts rig. First thing is to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. You'll need to pull the overflow bottle, which has three 3 8 screws. After it's out of the way, you can disconnect the computer. The single 3 8 inch screw that holds the connector is designed to unplug the unit as you unscrew it. Finally, three 5 16 screws hold the computer to the firewall. Now that the ECM is out of the rig, five Phillips head screws hold the housing together. I've also seen ECM housings that snap together. Once the top is off, you can see the circuit board encased in potting silicone. Gently work the circuit board out of the lower housing. There are two alignment pins on the other side of the housing that will break off if you're too rough with it. So go slow and careful, pulling straight up. It will eventually come out.
With the circuit board out of its housing, you can now identify the three capacitors that need replacing. They're not hard to find. Their metal tops will be sticking out of the potting silicone. Take note of that. They're deliberately not covered so that they can shed some heat. You'll want to make sure to leave the tops of the new ones exposed as well. Silicone sealer is an excellent insulator, and if they're completely covered, they'll fail faster due to heat buildup. Now comes the messy part of the job. Cutting the potting silicone away from the capacitors. For this job, I used an old, dull knife because I didn't want to damage the traces on the circuit board. They're too easy to cut with a sharp knife. You'll need to get all the silicone off the board, and you want to do it with a gentle scraping action rather than a cutting action. Remove only what you need to so you have enough room to work. With the dull edge, I was digging the stuff out as much as I was cutting it, but it worked well. You'll need to remove the compound from the back side where the capacitor's two leads are soldered as well. Now that the silicone is removed, take a look at the capacitors that are currently installed. Notice that they have a prominent stripe down one side. Just like your car battery, electrolytic caps have polarity. They have a negative and positive lead. The big stripe on the side of the cap marks the negative lead. Take a picture of the board if you need to in order to remember which side of the cap is negative. Bad things will happen if you install the new ones backwards. Now we're ready to remove the old caps from the board. I'm not going to go into a tutorial on how to use a soldering gun. There are many excellent videos on that topic available. If you're not sure, watch a few tutorials and then practice on something non-essential, or find a buddy who knows how to do it. This isn't the time or place to learn on the job. Bad solder jobs cause lots of problems. Make sure this one is done right. Getting the caps out is a lot easier if you use a solder wick to get rid of some of the old solder first. Then you don't have to worry about trying to heat up both the leads at once to get the caps out. I make my own solder wick from stranded copper wire and some rosin core soldering paste. It will suck the solder right out of the holes. I've also got a solder sucker but I found that works better for removing any remaining solder out of the holes once the cap is out than it does for actually removing the capacitor. You want a nice clean hole that you don't have to force the new leads into. Doing that might damage the new cap. Drop the new cap into place, making sure the polarity is the same as the old one.
solder the leads in on the other side. and nip off the excess with the wire cutters. Once they're all in, add silicone to reseal the board. The bottom side fits flat into the housing, so make sure nothing is sticking up. I had to trim a little bit off the first board I did after the silicone was dry. You don't want any weird pressure on the circuit board once it's installed in the housing. Then just put everything back together in the reverse order that you took it apart. A little dielectric grease on the conductor is good insurance against moisture getting in and causing trouble. Hopefully all went well and your Jeep is back on the road. That's all I've got. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.